everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia. I post new tutorials every Thursday, primarily on tumblers, but I do do other things. So when you are done watching this video, go ahead and jump back on my channel, check out some of the other things I've done, including reviews. All right, so this week I'm getting started with Christmas. I'm not gonna bombard you guys with Christmas cup tutorials, but I am gonna do one. I will probably do maybe one or two more. Uh, but I'm going to do other Christmas type things as well. So, but for this week, I am going to be working with Dollar Tree Vinyl, which I've worked with this before. It's not my favorite, but it is the black and red check, which is something that I wanted. I wanted to do a quick tumbler. So something that can be done within like a day, day and a half. And so it's gonna be mostly vinyl and then we're gonna do a pop of shimmer at the end. So if you're interested to see what I came up with, oh, and I'm gonna do a matching pen too. Stick around and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So as always, I start out by prepping my tumbler by sanding it and wiping it with 91% alcohol. I am not spray painting this tumbler, and I am working with a 20 ounce skinny straight from the Stainless Depot. All right, so what I'm doing here is I've already measured my tumbler, and it is 9.3 in diameter, or a little bit less, and it is 8 inches in height. So I am cutting out my stripes, or yeah, I guess if you want to call it stripes, uh, that I'm going to wrap around the top and the bottom. And then the extra one is for a pen wrap, the one on the left. And so I measured them out at 9.3 by two and a half in height. And so now I'm going to weed it out. This is the, this is the Dollar Tree vinyl paper vinyl. So it's not the greatest quality. I cut it on washi sheet setting and uh, I'm also doing pens, and I'm doing three pens, a black one, a red one, and I'm using a Maker Flow pen. So the first one I'm gonna wrap is the Maker Flow. It is a stainless steel chamber, and I've done a video on it, and I did not show you the prep because I've done a video on these. So if you're not familiar with working with Maker Flow pens, you can jump back on my channel and just search pen, and you're gonna see the video for that, and you're also gonna see videos for working with the Inkjoy gel pens, which I've already prepped. So if you're unfamiliar how to prep those, go ahead and take a look at that afterwards. So I am just wrapping this vinyl around. It's nice and easy, I'm only eyeballing it there is a little bit too much at the one end, which I will trim with my craft knife, but see, it's like just nice and easy. I just line it up and roll it on and make sure it's nice and smooth. And then here I come in with, and I'm just gonna do this on, I'm only gonna show you on the one, on the Maker Flow one, cause it's stainless steel. And then just trim that because you want the epoxy to seal the vinyl to whatever medium you're using. And in this case, it's the stainless steel chamber. And in the other case, it'll be the plastic pen chambers. All right, so now here I am. I'm going to I'm going to use the buffalo plaid on the top and the bottom stripes with a stripe in the middle. And so I'm cutting off each end a little bit, sticking the paper back on, but I'm leaving like a little overlap, just enough to stick to the cup, but not enough that it's gonna stick and it's not gonna be able to like move. So this is how I'm lining it up. I found that this way is working the best for me. And I know there's a lot of different, a, diff, bleh, a lot of different techniques, but I really liked this technique and it went on nice and smooth. I did leave a lip at the top, if you can see that silver stripe up there. And again, that's so that when I do my epoxy, it's gonna seal that vinyl to the cup. And you know, the amount of stainless steel you leave at the top is completely up to you and you can even paint it if you want. I wanted to just leave it silver. I was totally okay with that. All right, so here I come with my bottom stripe. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm trying to get it not too close to the bottom though because these cups are rounded at the bottom and if you get too close to the bottom, then you're gonna have like wrinkling and crinkling. So you wanna just bring it up a little bit and I'm gonna finish the bottom by painting it black and tacking down some glitter on there and I'll show you that in a bit. So I'm gonna leave, you know, a strip down at the bottom. I can't give you a measurement. It's, you know, just a guide. You do, you know, what you feel, you know, you bring it down as far as you want. All right, so now I have the center 
and I measure that and it's a little under three inches. So I'm gonna cut my next strip at three inches. So I'm using Cricut Design Space. I found this to be easier than the Silhouette for doing just simple basic things like this. And I'm also gonna cut my strips for, I'm doing the, the pens exact same way. So I'm cutting them, they're one and a half by one and a half. And the strip in the center is three by 9.3. And that's how I'm cutting it. And I'm using, it is Oracle's glitter vinyl that I picked up at Antiop Graphic Supply. I absolutely love this glitter vinyl, but it's very, very thick. So I cut it on the glitter, iron on glitter setting. And then I drafted up Tis the Season to put over top of that. I also cut out uh, pinstriping at 0.2 in height and point. Uh, 9.3 in width. I didn't show you doing that, but it was the same method as doing all of my other blocks. So here I am just wrapping the one pen with the center, with the center piece, the center glitter vinyl piece, and the same method that I did the cup. So now I'm just going to put my little stripes on and I'm not going to measure those. I'm just going to put them around. I'm going to put them pretty much split the difference between the buffalo plaid and the black glitter vinyl and make sure it's nice and even the problem with this vinyl it's a foil vinyl and i love it it is brushed gold and again this was something else that i picked up at anti up graphics supply is that if you unstick it it loses its stick so you'll have to like tack it down you may have to tack it down later on with um like a type of glue or something and you're gonna see that later on in the video i'll show you all right so here we go with the same method i'm gonna cut a little piece off and i'm gonna put it there but leaving a tiny bit to stick when i go to apply it to the cup and i do both ends both ends it just worked out so nicely for me to do it this way and so when you bring that up, you can kind of slide it around and adjust it. Um, I found it easy to adjust to get it lined up really nicely. So there we go. I stick it down and I'm just going to smooth it on with my fingers. You can use a squeegee. It's completely up to you. However you want to apply it. All right. So you're going to see there's a little bit of space between the buffalo plaid and the black vinyl, the black glitter vinyl. I'm going to just put this gold pinstriping in between the two. I wanted to incorporate gold in this because I want it to be a holiday feel. So with the buffalo plaid being more of like, you know, comfy cozy, and then with the black glitter, just because it's a pop of glitter, glitter-ish looking, and I'm gonna do, so this stripe I struggled with, and when I looked at it, for some reason, the cut was off. Now, sometimes if your bubble, if your vinyl bubbles, if it isn't sticking to your mat, it won't cut correctly, and that's what happened. So I pulled it up, and I put it down. I tried to adjust it a couple times, and I realized, you know what? I'm just going to cut a new piece because my vinyl, like the vinyl backing on this was like really, really tough to stick down because I was using just a regular stick uh, mat but this vinyl is wrapped up really tight in a roll and the, the paper backing is like really stiff so it kind of holds that curl so i said the hell with it i'm just going to print up a new stripe and i made sure that it was held down and this went on much nicer and lined up much better and so there's no rhyme or reason for lining this up i just eyeball it and then sometimes i have to pick it up and put it down just to you know make sure that those seams line up really nicely and again from doing that because of this foil nature and because of the adhesive backing it does lift a little bit later on which i'll have to glue down so i cut out just this season i did show you earlier on the font that i used i think it's beyond mountains probably picked it up either from Creative Fabrica or from uh, probably 1001 fonts. That's a um, place that I commonly used to go for different fonts, but now I've been using Creative Fabrica because I have the subscription. All right, so I'm just measuring because I wanna make sure this is centered between the two gold pinstripes, and I'm gonna apply this using the hinge method, so I'm gonna get that place down. It's the paper the uh, transfer paper is stuck to the one side once I get it all nice and lined up I'm going to wrap it around which sorry I'm out of frame <laughs> and now I'm going to peel and cut place that down and then pull the backing off and place my wording down 
So you can, you know, whatever method you find easiest, you go ahead and do that. That's what I found worked for something like this wrapping around the cup. All right, so now that I am done with this, I am going to paint the bottom with gloss black. It's folk art paint. You can use apple barrel or folk art, whatever. I choose to stay away from the Dollar Tree acrylic paints because I find that they're very sheer. And so I wind up having to do like three, four coats as opposed to this. I wound up doing two coats to get the coverage that I wanted. So you let it dry in between coats. I helped it along with a hair dryer. Now I'm gonna apply my glitter using Aileen's Tack It Over and Over. I love this glue. If you're not familiar with it, it goes on white and it dries clear, but it is tacky when it dries. And that's what you want because this glitter that I'm using is a black holographic called Prismatic Black. And it, when you varnish it, burnish it, burnish with a B, when you burnish it, burnish it down. I don't know, I was corrected by this from some angry person <laughs> because I pronounced it wrong. Uh, it gives this rainbow effect. So as you can see, I'm just pushing it down and basically pressing it down with my finger. You can use a glove finger. You can use your plain finger. You can use a silicone brush. I just prefer to use my finger because I can feel the rough spots, which are the spots that are still lifted because this glue is really dry and tacky. I'm going to reuse the glitter that falls off. Some people choose not to. It's up to you what you want to do. After I get done burnishing this down and getting it all nice and smooth, I am going to seal it with polycrylic. You can use polycrylic or you can use a clear spray paint. It's up to you. I just didn't feel like going outside. It's cold out. So I decided just to seal it with the polycrylic. Let it dry for a good hour. Make sure it's nice and dry before you go into your coats of epoxy because if it's not, it will be cloudy. And that's the same with even your spray paints or anything wet that goes into epoxy. You don't want it to be wet. So you can go over the edges. That's totally fine but just make sure it's nice and dry. I only do one coat. It doesn't need any more than that. This, this glitter is nice and sealed. It is not gonna travel when I do my epoxy. All right, so I printed out Tis the Season. I shrunk it down so that I could put it on the pens and I did Tis the and then Season underneath to wrap it around. And I'm just gonna show you one. Again, with this, this vinyl, this metallic uh, foil vinyl, if you will, be really careful of lifting edges. I did have that problem after I put my first coat of epoxy on, so I had to fix that. But see how it's lifted here? So I'm gonna use my Super Weld. I absolutely love this glue, and I'm going to tack down that edge so that when I put my epoxy on, it is not lifted. Make sure you have a gloved finger, because if it sticks, then you don't want to glue your finger to the cup. I'm gonna put that little UV light on there that it does like quick freezes and quick sets this glue. So there's gonna be absolutely no lifting. I checked the other, the other piece of uh, metallic vinyl and it was totally fine. So I have my epoxy mixed up and I am mixing in ultra fine shimmer. And this is gonna give this a pop of glitter shimmer over top of this entire cup. It just ties it in together and it was exactly what it needed for me anyway. I just, I just thought it was just really a nice touch to the buffalo plaid. And yeah, I cheated on the buffalo plaid. I didn't go through and spend an hour painting on the each individual square. I used a vinyl. And you know what? I absolutely love it. So, you know, tomato, tomato, you do you. But I thought, you know, to make a quick, easy, just cozy cup with this vinyl, it was so perfect. All right, so I'm just, I used, I mixed up 20 mLs of epoxy, and once this is set, I'm using a fast set, I'm gonna put my regular set on after a after two hours, because the fast set's good after two hours. I am going to torch this for bubbles after I'm done putting the epoxy on these pens, and then this cup is done. So two coats of epoxy, it's gonna be done, and I'm gonna be ready for my final remarks. So. All right, that's it for this, guys. I am done with my narration. Thank you all for sticking around, and I will see you soon.
right, guys, this cup is done. I love the way this came out. So only two coats of epoxy. So what was cool about this is through the entire process, only two coats of epoxy instead of layers and layers and layers of epoxy. So this cup is actually on the lighter side because if you know that layering epoxy creates a heavier cup. So the more layers you have, the heavier the cup. So this is nice and light. It's really just kind of like a warm and cozy kind of cup to me anyway. Here's the bottom, it looks beautiful. That holographic is awesome. All right, so here are two of the pens. So this is the Maker Flow pen and it's got the silver tip uh, with the stylus. And then here is the Ink Joy gel pen. And I lost my black tip, so <laughs> I don't have it to show in this one. I've got to probably steal one from work. So anyway, and I mean steal one from my own black pens at work to show you because I think I used it on another pen. So this is it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you like the stylus pen or if you like the Inkjoy gel pen better because of the tip. And don't forget to check out my Facebook group. It's a craft thing as well as my Instagram. I post things that I don't do tutorials on there. And don't forget to check out GMI Superstars group. They have fun giveaways every Sunday. All right, guys, I will see you all next time. Bye.